I am Jacoby, singer for Papa Roach. Sorry we haven't been here for seven years. I'm back, bitch. I am Tony. I play drums for Papa Roach. Tony Pat, And we'll be back soon. We, we were doing a lot of touring in the United States and we, to be completely honest, uh, the promoter, like the concert promoter's interest in Papa Roach was kind of low and our record company pretty much towards the end of the relationship, they didn't even put our last record out. Mm -hmm. So it was like we didn't have, it was a combination of a few things. And, uh, but now we have a new record company that's supporting Papa Roach. So here I am talking to you, which is like freaking great. It's, it's really refreshing because we know we have a lot of fans here. It's just a matter of, you know, going and getting the media, doing the small shows again and building it up from scratch. And we're not afraid to, you know, come in and do the, do the dirty work so we can bang it out again. I mean, in a sense, it is, it would be nice, you know, especially for us here in France. I mean, we've had really good shows here in the past. We've played uh, Alize Montmartre like many times and had great shows. And I've been doing interviews all day and they're like, man, why don't you guys come back? And I'm like, I'm so sorry, you know, like just got caught up, you know? And yeah. so, yeah, this is definitely the rebirth of P. Roach in France for real. And uh, we're gonna, we're trying to come back um, in June. There's some festivals that are going on in June and July, and then, or if we don't get on a festival, we'd like to do our own headlining show. Okay. We did Hellfest last year. I mean, yeah, Hellfest yeah. was cool. It's but a little, you know, little France uh, love right there. Yeah, you know? you know, we're trying to bring the love back to France, you know? Because we like to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we like to keep you on your toes. I mean, that's probably easier than doing, well, a wow. full a full studio album yeah we already for, have the live track yeah exactly for us i mean at, at the end of the touring cycle of 2009 we s wrapped it up we left we fulfilled our obligations with the major labels so our contract with them was up and so we felt it was a cool way to kind of recap the last decade of papa roach through the live shows so it's kind of like the best of both worlds you, we take you on a journey through the past and then with these new songs it's like the present and the future of papa roach and I think the dynamic between the both of them, I think it works really well. And I think, uh, you know, the, the new songs, we kept in mind while we were writing the new songs, these got to rip live. Well, I actually had filled in and done a few previous tours uh, before I technically joined or was asked to join. Uh, so, I mean, I kind of, I knew the whole situation. I knew how the camp ran, and you know, I just I loved it, and I really wanted to be a part of it. So, very fortunate and blessed to yeah. uh, be a part of it. And I, I mean, it's been it's been I love you too. It's been amazing, uh, and it's just to, to create music, you know, and to play on stage every night with these guys. It's 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 my home. He brings the fire, the punk rock fire, the punk rock <laughs> energy. You know, Tony came from the epitaph punk rock scene, and I think that that energy of that music scene f sits in line with Pop Roach. We're not a punk rock band per se, but like the energy of us is just, yes. you know, it's riotous, it's fucking wild. And like he just really matches the energy of the front three, you know, me, Jerry, and, and Tobin. And I think it's just like it clicks really well live. Uh, I would say definitely that's something that will become involved in our sound on the next record. We find ourselves listening to a lot of The Prodigy lately, um, as well as, uh, have you heard of the movement Dubstep? Yep. There's some really, really cool Dubstep beats, man. Just really heavy and aggressive, man. distorted keyboards and just different sounds. And I think that, you know, it's not like we're going to become one of those kind of groups, but it's just the way that it grooves and it bangs you and it and it rocks your body, like, I like that, you know? And I think in the new metal style that we had back in the day, it's like, we had that groove, you know? It was just different, you know? Hip hop influenced us. Oh. And so it'll be interesting to see how that style of music will influence our style of rock, because we're always gonna be a rock band. But pretty much towards the end of our relationship with Geffen, they were focused on pop and hip hop, you know? And we weren't the first rock band to go, all right, we gotta go, you know? Uh, Nine Inch Nails was, they had left, Marilyn Manson, 
Um, then it was us, we left, then um, AFI, then Weezer, like all the rock bands were just like, you guys, you guys aren't focused on rock music, so we gotta yeah. go, you know? And I think it's great for all the bands, and I think that people will see over the course of years, a lot of those bands will maintain solid mm -hmm. careers, you know? It's just we gotta work with people that see eye to eye with us creatively and also on a business level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an that's a, that's a organization we got involved with about a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. Um, pretty much what we do is we're raising money for all the local uh, homeless shelters and food banks in the cities that we go to. And so we're raising anywhere from like 5000 to $7,500 a week and it goes to each you know, food bank, you know, so a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars in each city we go to and it goes straight to it and, you know, they buy the food and feed the people. And so I think it's kind of a good opportunity for us to be involved in something that gives back to our community because, I mean, the world is given to us so much. I mean, the opportunity to like, you know, be rock stars or travel around the world and play music and live this dream. You know, I just feel that it's important to give back. We have been fed, now we need to feed. Yes, cool. that's all I'm saying. <laughs> we we um, were involved with a, a bunch of tours that, you know, with some of the older bands, like, say, Molly Crew, and, and uh, well, Nickelback has, like, a really wide fan base, so after coming off of those tours, we realized, like, we, we grabbed some of the older people, some of the 30 to 50-year-olds, you know, and they were like, oh, man, our kids are in love with you, so, and when then they saw us, they were they were coming back now, and it's it's cool. So we have like a yeah, a our wide fan base range. is a very wide range, especially in the United States. Um, but it's great when you're in the front, you look in the front row, and there's young people. That means there's yeah. a future for the band. I've been listening to so much James Brown. It's yeah, the song the payback, the Bronx, um, the Bronx, Soil Work. They're like a Swedish metal band. Um, Glitch Mob, yeah, they're like a dubstep kind of dark, nutty kind of experimental group, and then uh, Mike Snow. Did I lie during this interview? No, I did not. No, actually. Huh? Yeah, cool. Any other guys? I don't think awesome. I've ever lied in an interview. <laughs> That's well, maybe I have, I have definitely. Lied. Maybe about like, but people. not in this one. Not a, not in this one. No. no. Any other guys? Uh, no. No. Cool. Nah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank hey, you. I got a paperboard. It's clean. It has nothing on it.